start with the singing of hymn number 425, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <laughs> Let us draw near with a true heart to confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. In heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your holy and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. intro it which are printed in your worship bulletin for this morning the Lord is my light and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid though an army
army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war rise against me, yet I will be confirmed. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide. my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord Let us pray. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament lesson from God's Word for this fourth Sunday in Lent is taken from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 10. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, of our flesh and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy 
because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, which God prepared. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel, which serves as the text for our sermon meditation this morning, is taken from John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of our Lord. I'm using the words of the apostles. 92. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of the body, Sixty six by grace I am saved.
God's grace and His mercy and His peace be multiplied to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text is the Gospel lesson from John chapter 3, including the very familiar verses that most of you probably have memorized. Please be seated. Many people cannot remember their dreams as soon as they are awakened. But very few people cannot forget their nightmares even many, many years later. Even many years later. So it would seem is much more memorable than that which pleases us. Perhaps what pleases us in our earthly lives is more prevalent in our earthly lives than is what that, what scares us. We'd like it that way. We try to have it that way. We always hope that it's that way, but it's not always that way. And perhaps that's why we are fascinated with the dinosaurs of Jurassic Park. They're somewhere way off on an island. There's, and on that island they have big and other safety features to keep them there and perhaps that's why we're fascinated with the use of chainsaws in Texas. Maybe that's why we're fascinated with how Freddy Krueger uses his kitchen knives and axes. Because we can control that, if nothing else, with the remote control. Send it off into oblivion. Just like that, if it gets too scary. We can manage that. We can manage those scary images. We can keep them at arm's length by pushing the remote control button, if we choose. But there are three things that cause you and me, all mankind, reoccurring nightmares that are not, not manageable. We can keep them at arm's length. In fact, we cannot do anything about them. We can't do anything to get rid of them. That's evidenced by the fact they keep co coming up. They keep putting themselves in our faces. We can only just live with them like we have to live with the various aches, pains, heartaches, and disabilities of this earthly life that we all have. We all live with one thing or another. We live with mm -hmm. 24 seven, it's there. We live with it. Death is our most frightening, gut churning, mind bending, nightmarish fear. Death is the opposite of life. It's the opposite of life. But yet, knowing that, we still fall into the devilish trap, and it is the devil's trap that death is a part of living. It's not. A 
okay? Sin. Our own sin is chronic. It is a resident cause of our earthly physical death. That's why we die physically. Sin. We can deny it. We can ignore it temporarily. But it always eventually comes back in our face. And at times, even though we may pretend that it doesn't exist, it gets right back in our face. So, we try to redefine it. We try to re-identify it. Oh, we're big on re-identifying nowadays. But even though we may do so, it is still pointing its finger of responsibility at you and me. And it is a finger of responsibility. Satan, the devil, he demonically delights in relentlessly, relentlessly wagging his finger of accusation and condemnation in yours and my faces that forces, forces on us the deadly and damning responsibility for all of our disobedience against God the Father. Puts it right back at us, right back in our face, doing so. He renders futile all of our foolish and sinful denial, all of our pretending, all of our redefining, all of our re-identifying, all of our redirecting of our damning sins of unavoidable guilt. It's right back in our faces. The devil speaks nothing but sinful, damnable lies into yours and my ears. But what do we do? In response, we continue to reevaluate, to evaluate everything that he whispers into our frightened minds as worthy of consideration and evaluation. In other words, we continue to give him our ear. And that's because he sugarcoats his lies with just enough truth. Making them appear reasonable, making them appear worthy of our intelligent consideration. He's accomplished that task, hasn't he? Mm hmm. He's convinced us that we are so smart that we have nothing to fear from all of those fictional fairy tales that the stupid people of medieval times fell for. We're way smarter than those folks, we think. We're too smart to fall for pointed tails, for horns on the head, for pitchforks, in some place that nobody has ever seen and therefore nobody has ever proven exists, that place called hell. And we're too smart to fall for the antiquated notion that we are to blame for the things that we you know, like disobey his will, like sin. We're too smart to fall for that kind of nonsense. We're so smart now that we have re-identified sin as Mistakes. Yeah, they're just mistakes. They're just unfortunate, regrettable lapses in judgment that can be compensated for. 
or they can just be ignored as irrelevant nonsense that we don't need to bother or distress ourselves about, you know, like nightmares. They're not real. As soon as I wake up, they're gone. We don't need to worry about them. But nightmares can only bother or distress you if you believe that they actually happen. If you believe if you believe that they are true. If you don't believe your job your, and its income, your physical health, your freedoms, and your various relationships can dissolve and disappear in Kansas wind in 24 hours or less. If you don't believe that any of that can happen, well then, you're not tied up in knots of fear and dread and worry, are you? If you don't think that you're snake bit and dying like those chosen people of God did in today's Old Testament lesson in Numbers 21, 4 through 9, well then you go about your daily business and you don't bother yourself to look in faith to a hunk of bronze shape like a snake that's hanging on a pole. Now do you? But you and I Vaccinate a cursing down, cursing through every cell of our bodies. We can't do that any more than God's chosen people could do anything to save themselves from that snake venom poison that was flowing through their bodies in the Old Testament lesson. They couldn't do anything that is except die die they did because their sin of disobedience against God was worthy of only death just one of their sins against God in other words they're already done they've already done all that they could do when they sinned the sin that bit them into death like a snake they created their own worst nightmare of That's right, they killed themselves with their own deadly poisonous sin. That's all they could do. That was their only option. Sin. And they chose to do it. They chose to do it. They decided to do it. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, can what you and I cannot do. He can, and he did, create his life merely by saying, let there be. He can, and he did, create eternal life in you and me by merely saying, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus created eternal physical life in Adam and Eve. Jesus is creating eternal spiritual life in those he speaks himself into in these words. As he has done in you. Jesus doesn't speak disobedient rebellion into Adam and Eve. He doesn't have to. They already did it. They did it to themselves. They did it to themselves when they responded to the devil's whispering. Yes, I want to be like God. I want to be like God. So I choose to do what it takes to be like God. They spoke their self-generated and their sin into themselves and into you and me and all mankind. And that 
has left you and me with our chief nightmare of eternal death and also our self-inflicted nightmares of sin and hell. When you and I lose our correct distinction between living the dream and our self-generated and self-inflicted nightmare of our disobedience against God, Jesus Christ, crucified, well, he's the one who restores that distinction. He restores the distinction that you and I trashed. And at the same time, on his cross, he restores our correct focus on his cross as the place where he scandalously converted our nightmarish sin, death, and hell into his sweet dreams of his heaven that you and I are citizens of, that we are guaranteed, guaranteed of enjoying already now of holy baptism. In that faith, our nightmare is sin, the devil, and death itself cannot condemn us. They cannot accuse us. In faith, you and I, now we love only the light. Only the light of life. We now only stand in the light of life. That is Jesus Christ and him crucified. We no longer stand in the darkness of our nightmarish sin. Death and hell. We all with what will one day die a physical death. Everybody knows it. But we all will never, never, ever perish forever. Christ Jesus blood bought reconciling love from his cross. That is our dream come true. Dream fulfilled. So physical death, however it may happen, is not our worst nightmare. Rather, perishing, perishing in the eternal separation from the life-creating love of Christ Jesus from his bloody cross, that's our worst nightmare. Except, it's not. At least not anymore. Perishing. Physical death. Are no longer nightmares for you and me. in the faith that Christ Jesus Holy Spirit created in you and me in holy baptism. So Christ Jesus lovingly says to you and me, right now, and when our physical bodies sleep temporarily in our graves, he says to you and me, sweet dreams, sweet dreams. No more nightmares for you. And that's why we so joyfully and confidently praise God from whom all blessings of truly sweet dreams flow into you and me in the sin-destroying and life-creating blood of Jesus Christ crucified. Amen.
Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give us your sweet dreams in your gift of life from your cross where you died to give us life, destroying the power of death, destroying its guilt, its accusation, destroying the guilt and accusation of our sin. We thank you for this greatest of all gifts and this greatest of all peace and assurance and comfort. And in that comfort and un unbounded joy, we pray your humble and caring blessing of love be shown to Dewey Adams, Jim Sarah, Amy Roebuck, Brian Walker, Roger and Janet Altavote, Sarah Bay Sarah, Richard Blanton, Gavin Euler, Sheila Gall, Brooke Keenoff, Jackie Keenoff, Byron, Vanessa Seward, Ula Simpson, Sharon Smith, Ken Adelaide Walters, Jesse Barr, Jake Bennett, Chaplain Cody Norton, Norton, Cooper Schumann, Aaron Stover, Michael Turco, Peter Bay, Larry Rowland, Dixie Meng, Ron, Ronnie Barr, Stan Runke, Luke Bennett, Gary Barnson, Angela Williams, Elsie Keister, Sherry Meng, Linda Ellsworth, Preston Williams, Ella Grable, Zane Euler, and Elmer and Carolyn Puker. We pray your blessings be showered down upon them and those not named but known in our hearts in your standing in your need of body, soul, and spirit as you know best and according to what you have taught us. Be thy name. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. seated as we sing the closing hymn, hymn 430, My Song is Love Unknown, 430.
Good to see you all. Okay. Uh, one. Something. Um, so, but we thank God for his gift of time. Uh, his creation of time in which he has created you and me. So, uh, we have uh, this coming, well, let's see, here in just a few minutes, we have the uh, meeting for uh, Sunday school to uh, try and do some planning here. And uh, this coming Wednesday, we have our fifth midweek Lenten Divine Service at 7 o'clock. Uh, so, please keep that in mind. And uh, when I say fifth, that means that uh, we're getting real close to uh, Palm Sunday and Easter, so uh, we're all good for that, and we're all much for the rain. But we're and Good Friday. So. Uh, are there any announcements in addition to that? Yes, ma'am. There's an LWL meeting at church, and we'll be there by Sharon. And also, we are collecting all the items for the Easter Sunday service. So if you want to come to that, we're going to be there by Sharon. And also, we are collecting items for Kids Closet now until April 10th. And the list is on the table. Great. April 10th is the LWML zone meeting here at Christ. Um, so please keep that in mind and plan for that. And um, we'll be meeting right up here by Sharon Smith. So, okay. Uh, oh, and by the way, somebody put out an absolutely excellent bookmark on the table out here. And if you don't have uh, hopefully whoever that is, when those are gone, we'll make more. They're absolutely excellent to uh, help you uh, to have your uh, devotion time with the Lord in His Word uh, every day uh, of the week. So please take a look at that. Alrighty, I don't see any other hands, so thank you and God bless.